The Warcross series is one that I'm really excited to share with you guys, especially those of you who like things um, like um, video game related or anything like that. Um, so um, basically this is a two book series, so Warcross is the first one and then Wildcard is the second one. And I've read both books of the series. Um, they're about, they're shorter than the other ones that I've showed you. They're 300 something pages. Um, and really like, there's some mixed media in here. So like, um, some of the pages will have like this, where you have like text message conversation and stuff on it. So really even 300 pages is not a lot um, considering um, like how big the text is and stuff like that. So if you like shorter books, if you like books that have to do with like technology, like a futuristic society, um, on my stories I put like if you liked Ready Player One, um, I would like liken it to Ready Player One as well. Um, in the reviews of these books, one of the reviews says, Hunger Games meets Minecraft. So like if you like Minecraft, um, they say like this is a good book for you. So um, I've had a lot of students, especially um, some of my male students, really like this series um, because of like the video game aspect, but really it's a book for everybody. Um, it is written by an Asian American author. So if you're looking for books of diversity as well, that's supporting our Asian American authors as well. Um, and she does often put like an Asian American aspect into it. So like she will include characters who are Asian or she'll have it be in an Asian setting like um, Warcross. Half of it takes place in futuristic America. Half of it takes place in futuristic Tokyo. So I thought that was cool. I got this series actually because last year in the summer um, I went to Japan and so when I saw this was set in Tokyo, I was like, oh, that's awesome because I'm going to be in Tokyo. So then I can like actually put an image to what I'm reading. Um, but yeah, so you like Japanese stuff too. I know a lot of my students were really into like Japan. So that's also for you. Um, I am going to read the first two chapters um, because actually these chapters are shorter than most books. So I'm going to read two chapters. Okay. Um, I will read you the overview real quick. So it says, teen hacker Amika Chen works as a bounty hunter, tracking down Warcross players who bet on the game illegally. To earn some quick cash, Amika hacks into the game only to accidentally glitch herself into the action and become an overnight sensation. When Amika gets a call from the game's creator, the young billionaire Hideo Tanaka, he makes her an offer she can't refuse. And suddenly, Amika's whisked off to Tokyo into a world of fame and fortune. But the more time she spends with Hideo, the sooner the lines begin to blur between business and something more, pulling her deep into a sinister plot with major consequences for the entire Warcross Empire. Um, so like, kind of like how we talked about like in dystopian novels, um, there's always that aspect of like, what's going too far with technology. So this is going to kind of like explore that a little bit in this world that they call Warcross, which is a video game um, that Hideo Tanaka made when he was a teenager. Um, and it's sort of like a virtual reality world. So I thought that that was really cool. All right, chapter one and two are both set in futuristic Manhattan, New York. So I'm gonna start with chapter one. It's too cold of a day to be out on a hunt. I shiver, tug my scarf up higher over my mouth, and wipe a few snowflakes from my lashes. Then I slam my boot down on my electric skateboard. The board is old and used like everything else I own. It's blue paint almost entirely scraped off to reveal cheap plastic underneath. But it's not dead yet, and when I push my heel down harder, it finally responds, jerking me forward as I squeeze between the two rows of cars. My bright rainbow dyed hair whips across my face. Hey, a driver yells as I maneuver past his car. I glance over my shoulder to see him waving a fist at me through the open window. You almost clipped me. I just turn around and ignore him. Usually, I'm a nicer person than this, or at least I would have shouted an apology. But this morning, I'd woken up to a yellow paper taped to the door of my apartment. It's words in the largest font you can imagine. 72 hours to pay or vacate. Translation, 
I'm almost three months behind on my rent, so unless I can get my hands on $3,450, I'll be homeless and in the streets by the end of the week. That would put a damper on anybody's day. My cheeks sting from the wind. The sky beyond the cut of skyscrapers is gray, turning grayer, and in a few hours this flurry of snow will become a steady fall. Cars jam the streets, a non-stop trail of brake lights and honking from here all the way to Times Square. The occasional scream of a traffic controller's whistle sounds above the chaos. The air is thick with the smell of exhaust and steam billows from an open vent nearby. People swarm up and down the sidewalks. Students coming home from school are easy to spot, their backpacks and fat headphones dotting the crowds. Technically, I should be one of them. This should have been my first year of college. But I started skipping classes after Dad died, and I dropped out entirely seven years ago. Okay, fine. Technically, I was expelled. But I swear I would have quit anyway. More on that later. I looked down at my phone again, my mind returning to the hunt. Two days ago, I had gotten the following text message. New York Police Department alert. Arrest warrant out for Martin Hamer. Payment, $5,000. The police are so busy these days with increasing crime in the streets, they don't, they don't have time to hunt for petty criminals on their own. Petty criminals like Martin Hamer, who's wanted for gambling on Warcross, stealing money, and allegedly selling drugs to fund his bets. So about once a week, the cops send out a message like this, a promise to pay anyone who can catch the criminal in question. That's where I come in. I'm a bounty hunter, one of many in Manhattan, and I'm fighting to capture Martin Hamer before another hunter can. Anyone who's ever fallen on hard times will understand the nearly constant stream of numbers that runs through my mind. A month's rent in the worst apartment in New York is $1,150. A month's food, $180. Electricity and internet, $150. Boxes of macaroni, ramen, and spam left in my pantry, four. And so on. On top of that, I owe $3,450 in unpaid rent and $6,000 in credit card debit. The number of dollars left in my bank account, $13. Not the normal things a girl my age worries about. I should be freaking out over exams, turning in papers, waking up on time. But I haven't exactly had a normal adolescence. $5,000 is easily the largest bounty in months. For me, it might as well be all the money in the world. So for the last two days, I've done nothing but track this guy. I've lost four bounties in a row this month. If I lose this one too, I'm going to be in real trouble. Tourists always clogging up the streets, I think as a detour forces me down a path right into Times Square, where I get stuck behind a cluster of auto taxis jammed at the pedestrian walkway. I lean back on my board, pull myself to a halt, and start inching backward. As I go, I glance down at my phone again. A couple of months ago, I'd succeeded in hacking into the main directory of Warcross players in New York, and synced it all up to my phone's maps. It's not hard, not if you don't remember that anybody else in the world is connected in some way to everyone else. It's just time consuming. You worm your way into one account, then branch out to their friends, and then their friends, and then eventually you're able to track the location of any player in New York City. Now I've finally managed to place my target's physical location, but my phone's a cracked, beat up old thing with an antique battery that's on its last legs. It keeps trying to sleep in order to save energy, and the screen is so dark I can barely see anything. Wake up, I'm rather squinting, squinting at the pixels. Finally, the poor phone lets out a pitiful buzz and the red location marker updates on my map. I make my way out of the taxi jam and push my heel down on my board. It protests for a moment, but then it speeds me forward, a dot in a sea of moving humanity. Once I reach Times Square, screens tower over me, surrounding me in a world of neon and sound. Every spring, the official Warcross Championships kick off with a huge ceremony and two teams of top-ranking players compete in All-Stars opening round of Warcross. This year's opening ceremony happens tonight in Tokyo, so all the screens are Warcross related today, showing a frenzied rotation of famous players, commercials, and footage of last year's highlights. Frankie Dina's latest craziest music video plays on one side of the building. She's dressed like her Warcross avatar, in a limited edition suit and webbed glitter cape and dancing with a bunch of businessmen in bright pink suits. Underneath the screen, a group of excited tourists stop to pose for photos with some guy dressed in fake Warcross gear. Another screen features five of the superstar players competing in tonight's opening ceremony. Asher King, Ken O. Park, Jenna McNeil, Max Martin, Pin Wachowski. I crane my neck to admire them. 
Each one of them is dressed from head to toe in the hottest fashion of the season. They smile down at me, their mouths big enough to swallow the city. And as I look on, they all hold up cans of soda, declaring Coca-Cola their drink of choice during game season. A marquee of text scrolls below them. Top Warcross players arrive in Tokyo, poised for world domination. Then I'm through the intersection and cut onto a smaller road. My target's little red dot on my phone shifts again. It looks like he's turned onto 38th Street. I squeeze my way through another few blocks of traffic before I finally arrive, pulling over to the curb beside a newsstand. My breath fogs in the icy air. Caught you, I whisper, allowing myself a smile as I think of the $5,000 bounty. I hop off my electric skateboard, pull out his straps, and swing it over my shoulder so that it bumps against my backpack. It's still warm from the use, the heat of it seeping through my hoodie, and I arch my back to savor it. All right, and then I'm gonna skip a little bit in the chapter um, to kind of like introduce you to the um, person who's the inventor of Warcross. Um, Hideo Tanaka turns 21, inside the private life of the Warcross creator. My heart skips a familiar beat to my idol's name. Too bad there's no time to stop and flip through the magazine. Maybe later. I reluctantly turn away, adjust my backpack, and board higher on my shoulders, and pull up my hood to cover my head. The glass windows I pass reflect a distorted version of myself. Face elongated, dark jeans stretched too long, black gloves, beat up boots, faded red scarf wrapped around my black hoodie. My rainbow colored hair spills from underneath my hood. I try to imagine this reflected girl printed on the cover of a magazine. Don't be stupid, I think. I push the ridiculous thought away as I think as I head towards the cafe's entrance, shifting my thoughts instead to the running checklist of the tools of my backpack. All right, so that's what I'm gonna give you of chapter one. Um, and then I'm gonna read you a little bit of chapter two as well um, towards the end, because this will give you like a good intro into um, the book itself. So this is the end of chapter two after she's um, lost her bounty. So she's not gonna get that $5,000. Got stolen by somebody else. Okay, so last two pages of chapter two. A familiar nausea settles into my stomach. I reach up to rub at the tattoo running along my collarbone. Every locked door has a key, but what if this one doesn't? What if I can't get out of this? There's no way I'll be able to get my hands on enough money in time. I'm out of options. I fight off the panic, trying to keep my mind from spiraling downwards and force myself to even my breathing. My eyes wander away from the TV and toward the window. No matter where I am in the city, I always know exactly which direction my old group foster home sits. And if I let myself, I can imagine our apartment fading away into the home's dark, cramped halls and peeling yellow wallpaper. I can see the bigger kids chasing me down the corridor and hitting me until I bleed. I can remember the bites from bed bugs. I can feel the sting on my face from Mrs. Devitt slapping me. I can hear myself crying quietly in my bunk as I imagine my father rescuing me from that place. I can feel the wire of the chain link fences against my fingers as I climbed over them and ran away. Think. You can solve this. A little voice in my head flares up stubborn. This will not be your life. You are not destined to stay here forever. You are not your father. On the TV, the lights in the Tokyo Dome finally dim. The cheering rises to a deafening roar. And that wraps up our pregame coverage of tonight's Warcross opening ceremony, one analyst claims, his voice hoarse. He and the others hold up the V for victory signs with their hands. For those of you watching from home, time to put on your glasses and join us in the event of the year. Kira has already popped on her virtual reality glasses. I head to the fold-out table where my own glasses lie. Some people say that Warcross is just a stupid game. Others say it's a revolution. But for me and millions of others, it's the only foolproof way to forget our troubles. I lost my bounty. My landlord is going to come screaming again for his money tomorrow. I'm going to drag myself to my waitressing job, and I'm going to be homeless in a couple of days with nowhere to go. But tonight... I can join in with everyone else, put on my glasses, and watch the magic happen. 
Um, so like I said, that's um, the first two chapters of what I gave you for Warcross, which those chapters are a lot shorter. I skipped a little bit of um, chapter two, but really they're like, I would say like five pages long, uh, five to 10 pages long each per chapter, kind of like just averaging it out. Um, so it's a pretty like fast paced book. It's easy to go through um, quickly. So those of you guys who like shorter books, like it will be a little bit faster paced going through. Um, there's a lot of adventure in this. Um, she has like a total turn of events from, she's currently, like what I read you, she's currently really poor. She grew up in a, um, like with her dad dying at a young age and then um, she kind of like turns her life around once she meets Hideo. So I think you guys, if you like um, like video game related stuff, like I said, they liken this to like Minecraft meets Hunger Games. Uh, it's like Ready Player One, stuff like that. Um, so I think you guys would really, really like this book if you like those kinds of things. Um, but also it's just kind of for everybody. Like um, there's something that everybody can connect to in this. There's like obviously like romance, like there's going to be um, a mix of stuff in here. So um, that series was called Warcross by Marie Lu. Um, I did want to give you other series that she's also written too because I'll probably, um, the Legend series, um, which is this one, um, is really, really popular too. It was like one of her first most popular series and that is a trilogy, so it has three books. And then she's also got this series which is called um, The Young Elites and that's also a trilogy. Um, so they're all different. Um, legend is more like, um, like it's still futuristic, but it's more like dystopian in nature. Um, so like that's a book I usually offer during like my dystopian unit. Um, the young elites is more like, um, kind of like adventure -y, um, and like warrior-ish. So um, not all of her books are the same, not all of the series are the same, um, but she's got like so many bestseller books that really anything you read um, by Marie Lu is bound to be a fantastic book. So I did want to recommend that author to you guys and specifically this series because um, it's different than some of the other books that I've showed you already. Um, I am going to put the um, link up here once again to her Instagram page so that you guys can go check out her specifically as an author and more stuff about her. Um, I don't know if, I think Legend is supposed to become a movie eventually, I'm not quite sure, but I could see like easily any of these books becoming movies. So um, once again, if you guys have any suggestions for me on any other books, um, this is going to be my last one for this week. Um, next week, um, I'm trying to stick to like the Tuesday, Thursday thing, but really it's just going to be like twice a week. So um, the next one I'll be back on next week will probably be either Tuesday or Wednesday. And I'll let you guys know as usual, like ahead of time on my Instagram. Um, but make sure that you share this and that hopefully... Um, if you liked one of the books that I suggested, like please let me know like that... Um, hey, you suggested this book, I read it, and I really loved it, because um, I like to know like the feedback of what you guys liked and didn't like, or suggestions that you have for the future. Alright, so that's it for me today. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you guys back here next week.